Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Hi. My name is Dan, and I'm the founder of World Education. And I'm Patricia, I'm the Associate Director. And uh, today we're gonna share some tools with you. You know, all of, all of us are going through a pretty uh, tough time right now. Uh, so let me first uh, tell you what we're doing. We're, we're a training organization, and we have tools that we'd like to share with you to help uh, you go through this uh, confinement situation. Uh, tools that we have been uh, sharing with, uh, with the public for all, over more than 30 years, or close to 40 years now. All right. The first tool that you're going to learn or you, we're going to share with you is called DDD. It stands for Desires Die Day. It's a great tool. You're going to see. Yeah, you know, sugar, sugarless diet, right? But this is desireless diet. You know, uh, years ago, I was uh, psychologically obese. I was suffering from psych psychological obesity. You know what that means? It means that every day I'm treating myself with desire. Morning, afternoon, evening, I'm always, you know, treating myself with the desires that cannot be fulfilled immediately. So I got fat in the head. And I don't even have room to move in my head because I was so fat with desire. So I said to myself, Dan, you got to go on diet. You got to go on diet. Otherwise, you're not, you're not going to get where you want to go. So I created a concept called DDD, which stands for Desires Diet Day. So DDD means you don't wish for something, you don't hope for something, you don't desire for something that you cannot lay your hands on immediately. Or that right. you cannot fulfill immediately. Right. So uh, I've been practicing this for over 30 years and it really is it's an incredible tool, but I don't know if, if you practice it. I would love to have your opinion. Uh, so, how do, I, how, how do I do this? Okay, imagine I've got three pills, three desires diet pills, psychological pills. I just pop it into my mind. One in the morning, one in the afternoon, or one in the evening. Or sometimes I just do it once a day. And then, you know, all throughout the week, I, I get into a reflex of or, uh, putting this DDD in practice. So when I wake up in the morning, I pop one of these pills in there. It means, okay, Dan, stop desiring that uh, the meeting is going to go fine this afternoon. All right? I have no desire at all. And I, in the past, I would have a lot of desire, desire to be successful, desire to be uh, rich, desire to be, uh, desire to have recognition. So when I pop one of these tools, I absolutely have no desire whatsoever. I just leave the, the, the moment. So in the morning when I get up and I feel like a leak, I can go to the bathroom, I can go to the toilet and have a leak and feel good. All right. If I want to have a coffee, I just go to my kitchen and make myself a coffee. See, you want, you can. So in the, I'm operating in a, in a you want, you can mode. All right. Uh, Let's imagine I send, I send her an urgent email to somebody. Now, I don't desire that I'm going to get a response. No, once I send it, I send it. If I desire to get a response, and if the response is not coming, I'm going to feel bad. All right? So, uh, I made a list. You want to say something, Patricia? Yeah, I'd like to add something. In fact, we can have desires, but we cannot have desires for things we, we cannot control. And in, in the example of the mail, that Dan just gave, he cannot control the response. So he has a desire to send a mail, he sends a mail, it's okay, but no desire to uh, get a response yeah. because there's no control on it. Yeah, no desire to hope that my meeting is up and is going to go well and so on and so forth. So I'm focused on just this moment and doing what I can do uh, to, 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 to get what I want. All right? So, uh, I have a list of things. When I wake up, I have a small little simple things. 
like for instance, if I want to uh, uh, call a friend, I can, I have a phone, I call a friend. Uh, but I don't hope or wish that my friend or my colleague would call me, right? Um, if I want a problem, <laughs> that's easy too. I go look for a problem, right? So you know, it's immediate, immediate what's called a satisfaction. You know, I want a problem, I go look for a problem. I call a friend up and say, hey, you got some problem? Come share with me, I'm looking for a problem, you see? But I don't hope and wish that the people will come to me with their problems. No wish, or, no, no hoping of those, those kind of stuff, you see? It puts us on a very, very positive mode. Right. And I found that I became more productive. Uh, I have more leeway, I have more control of this moment. So you can make a list, for instance, while you're in your room or your apartment, your house, and uh, you're, 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 you're under confinement, you can make a list of say, okay, um, or you can plan to have a brainstorming session. If you got members of your family, right, okay, you make it at two o'clock in the afternoon, you have a brainstorming session, fine. So you can do that. Uh, having lunch, okay, at lunch, 12 o'clock, you can have lunch. That's, that you can do, all right, you can have lunch. Uh, what else? You know? uh, if you want to call somebody, you can call somebody. If you want to work on a project, you can work on the project. Right. So it's, all, it, it's always you want, you can. you can. Right. So you have no unfulfilled desires because your, your desires are immediately met. Right. So that's a, that's the DDD appeal. Uh, you can you can plan a list of things or uh, half a dozen things that you can do throughout the day in your room or in your apartment. Uh, you can go on a on a what you call a, a hunting expedition in your brain, <laughs> and this is a lot of fun. You you set up to go on a thirty minute hunting experience, and what do you hunt? Well, you hunt for psychological monkeys and gorillas. So let me tell you what a, a monkey is. A monkey is the thought that's bugging you. Like, oh, you haven't done this, you, you must finish that, or oh, oh, what else? Uh, What's going to happen? You're going to be late. You're going to lose. Yeah. The, the, you're going to lose is, a, is another uh, a, a monkey, it's a gorilla. Yes. The heavy thoughts, like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And it brings you anxiety. Those are gorilla thoughts. All right. So go hunt for them. I mean, sit down in your safety and say, okay. What, what are those? What, what are the monkeys uh, that attacked me yesterday? Or what are the gorillas that attacked me uh, uh, two weeks ago? All right, you you find yourself in a situation where you feel really very bad because you're hit by a gorilla. So you go out and you hunt for that gorilla. Write the name of that gorilla and say what's going to happen. You're going to lose, or you're not good enough. Imagine you gave a speech. You uh, gave a speech. And during that speech last week, you were so nervous, all right? So you're attacked, you're attacked by the big heavy monkey or gorilla, but you're not good enough, what are people going to think? Well, note that down, all right, first. And then when you, when you manage to hunt and identify them, you are aware the next time you feel bad, you know which monkey or gorilla is going to help you. Then you can deal with them. Well, you got to reason with them, of course. Right. You know, like uh, two people talking together. You ask questions. You ask why. You know, yeah. what, how. Yeah. You why are you not good enough? Who who suggests that you're not good enough? Who you says know? you're going to lose? Right. What's going to happen? You don't know. See, you reason with the monkeys or the gorillas objectively. And yeah, but first you got to catch them. You course. catch them by identifying them. So you can spend thirty minutes doing that. And then you can spend the next 35 uh, or 30 minutes watching a funny movie. I can, that's within my, I can turn on the, I can turn on my, my computer. I can go to Google and look for a funny, funny movie. Okay, like Mr. Bean or whatever. And, and spend 30 minutes of uh, having a good laugh. All right. Or you can spend uh, time uh, learning uh, a new recipe. Or you can read one or two chapters of a book. You know, you'll be amazed that your days will be filled with all the you want, you can, you want, you can, instead of you want and you can, all right? But well, that's how to stop, stop being attacked when you're 
by yourself or you, you're with your family. So you don't have any frustration, any kind of or, or emotions that are, are, are negative. So that's a DDD pill. You do it three times a day or once a week, once a, every two days. Right. I think once a week is not enough. Oh, it's not enough. You're right. Perfect. I think once a day is good. Yeah, three At times a day. That means three times a day you take that pill. It doesn't cost you a penny. You just pop it in. Remember what we say? No wants, no desire, because you're on, on diet. You're on a desireless day diet. So get, your, get yourself a little, a little box, uh, put some, some bonbons, some sweets in there to represent the pill. Right. It works wonders. I mean, for 30 years, more than 30 years, our students have been doing, doing that, going on the diet, and they find themselves very, very productive. I would like to add something. It doesn't mean that you cannot have desires for the future, but these desires, you're going to transform them into objectives. And then you come back to now, and you act now on what you can do. Yes. You know, that's, that's important. Because if you project in the, into the objective and you feel that you cannot reach it, uh, there are many obstacles and all this, you are going to feel dissatisfied and you're not going right. to feel good. And it's not productive. It's not conducive to uh, leading you towards that objective. Right. So DDD, desireless, desireless diet day, three times a day. And this will really make you happy and gay. Okay, uh, the next concept we're going to be talking about is uh, is dancing with Bob. Dancing with Bob. Now, who is uh, what does Bob stand for? B O B. It stands for boss of bosses. Boss of bosses, and Bob is nothing but ultimate reality. Ultimate reality. So it's not an illusion. It's ultimate reality. So Bob is not what you like to have, uh, what you think it, it should be, what you think uh, uh, you would have or you would hope to have. Or what you like or what it should be. It's it, nothing of that. It's just what, what it is. is. Okay? Uh, if this uh, computer breaks down, well, it's Bob. It's a happening. It's a manifestation of reality. If you have a, a meeting with a client and the client turns up late, all right, he turns up late and of being there at three, he, he, he turns up at four o'clock, an hour later. Well, that's Bob. It's no use getting upset with that. Right? If you're upset, it means Bob slaps you on the face or kick you up in the, kick in the behind. And you're going to do more harm to you than uh, helping the situation. You lose time and energy. Each time, if you don't see Bob, coming you're going to get beaten a snail on the floor is bob a snail dog sheet is bob it's not god it's bob so you want to open your eyes and see dog sheet and not step on it all right whoever is in front of you is bob it's a manifestation of reality okay when your kids fail or is late for dinner it's bob it's a manifestation of bob it's not what you like to have, uh, not what you think it should be. It's not what you hope it to be. It is what is. So very, very, maybe 0.011% of people understand this concept. So they don't, they have not been taught the concept of Bob. They have not been taught the concept of rea uh, ultimate reality. And just like they, they're walking right through the wall, if they get, if they get beaten up by Bob. So, uh, what happens when you get beaten by Bob? What, what, what if Bob, how do you know Bob is, uh, is, is there in front of you? Oh, by the way, there's good Bob and there's a bad Bob. It's how we interpret it, okay? There's good reality and negative reality, bad Bob. And it all depends on your perception. Uh, imagine you want a loto, you want a lottery. And all of a sudden, you come in with a uh, hundred million million dollars. You might think it's a good Bob, right? But it can turn out to be very bad Bob, be a bad Bob. You're afraid of people, 
They're afraid white people are talking to you. Are, are they after your money? Are they sincerely interested in you? So a good Bob can turn into a bad Bob. A good reality can turn into a bad reality. And a bad reality can turn into a good reality. Exactly. So if somebody, if you're in front of somebody and somebody gets mad with you or gets angry with you or criticizes you, don't feel upset because this person is Bob. If you're upset, you're letting Bob slap you over the face. So you just kind of look and say, hey, that's Bob. All right. So what happened? How, how do you know Bob is he, Bob really, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, slam, you, slam you over the pavement or, or beat you up? Each time you feel negative, all right, or frustrated, or any kind of negative emotion, anxiety, okay, you know that you got beaten by Bob. So what you want to do to stop Bob beating you is turn your head to the right. How do you do that? You just turn your head to the right. You can do it, right? So no problem. And then you're going to concentrate on one object for 30 seconds or on three objects, if it's too long, three objects for 10 seconds each. And concentrating means emptying your mind. No words, no thoughts, no feelings, nothing. You're just here and now, and you watch that object like it's the first time you're watching it. Yeah, this is a martial art concept. This is a martial art concept. When two martial artists are confronting each other, they have to empty their mind. They got to be very conscious. But unfortunately, most of the time, we're in a subconscious state. We're not in a conscious state. We're in a subconscious state, and we interpret what the other guy's going to, going to do to us. The minute you lose lose control of this conscious state, then that's where you get beaten. You're no more, you're no more aware, you're no more focused. Focus. Yeah. The objective is to bring you up or bring us up yes. to the conscious level where we are seeing the situation as is. You don't interpret. You don't interpret. You don't, uh, you, know, you, just, you just see. And whatever you need to do, you see in our subconscious, we have a lot of reflexes, this will take over, but you don't, don't analyze it. You just open your eyes and you see. This way, we're not going to be submerged by negative emotions. Yeah, imagine you're in a room and there's a table in front of you. There's some chairs there. Those chairs are not moving, they're still. So your mind has to be like those chairs. They're still, they're not moving, right? So if you see somebody that's angry at you or getting a, a uh, Chris, I, you just watch the, 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 the expression of the face. That's where you're conscious and you want to not be affected. Somebody can call you names and you just listen. Hey, this is Bob. This is Bob manifesting itself. But the minute you get affected or feel negative, then Bob has his hit you. You have not seen Bob. So you learn to recognize who Bob is. This way we're going to be much more stable. All right. The COVID-19 is Bob. Don't wish it, it hadn't happened or don't wish the, uh, uh, don't wish that uh, you'll get this, 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 this coronavirus will go away fast. No, it's Bob. It's a manifestation of reality. Don't have any wants. Just dance with Bob. All right. The virus is here. What, what can I do to dance with it, to, to adapt to it? And that way, you will not have any anxiety, all right? You don't have any anxiety because you know and you see Bob, right? Bob is what is, you know what you like it to be, not what it should be, what you hope it to be, it is what is. Right? So, you can, you know, you can do that even three times a day, turning your head to the right. Three times a day to help yourself empty your mind. It takes, only, you, yeah. it takes only 30 seconds. Yes. Each time. And eventually it becomes a reflex. Yeah. And when you're in a state that way, those monkeys and those gorillas, they, they, they get thrown out. They don't, they will not attack you. Like what's going to happen, what's going to happen, you want, you can't, they, they won't attack you. Because you're, you have emptied your mind. And this takes practice. You don't get it like that. You don't get it by just understanding the concept. 
you have to practice. And to practice several times. Yes. Regularly until it becomes a reflex. And I tell you, when you control that state, or when you get to that state, you're not afraid of anything. So this is part of the part of the your what's called the this is the concept of dancing with Bob. All right. So uh, the last tool is a very advanced tool. It's a very advanced tool. It's about managing eternity. Managing eternity. When I was a kid, I was, yeah, but first of all, to manage eternity, manage eternity, I have, for me to manage eternity, I have to ask myself, Dan, who are you? I got to understand my source. I said, and to ask myself, Dan, who, who, who are you and where are you from? Where do you come from? All right? Uh, and when you know your source, then life is really, really, really cool. All right? So I used to ask myself, Dan, are you Chinese? Are you Singaporean? That's where I was born. I was born in Singapore. And I said, are you Singaporean? What does it mean to be a Singaporean? All right? And I realized that, uh, that I have a mistaken identity due to ignorance. Now, several years ago, several years ago during a conference, during a conference in Paris, I brought three glasses, three glasses. In the first glass, I filled it with uh, ketchup. Tomato ketchup. In the second glass, I filled it with chocolate, chocolate cream. And in the third glass, I I filled it with white, uh, white chantilly cream. Chantilly cream, which is white. Okay. So I took my finger and I dip it, I plunge it into the glass with ketchup, and I. I lift up and I ask the audience, is my, is my finger the ketchup? I ask them, is my finger the ketchup? And most of the people shook their head. They said, no, your finger is the finger, it's not the ketchup. So I wipe to it, I, I, I dip into the second glass with this chocolate cream, chocolate. And I show it to the audience again. I say, is my finger the, the, the chocolate cream? I see again the hand shake, uh, the head shaking. He said, no, no, it's not. The finger is always the finger. I said, I said, the last one, okay? I'm going to dip it in the creme chantilly. So it's all white now. I said, listen, it's my, I'm going to, this is going to be the last question. Is my finger the chantilly, the, the cream? And they, <laughs> they said, of course not then. I said, okay, now I'm going to ask you another question. Let's imagine this finger. It's a soul or an entity or a source. Uh, let's say it's an entity. And it, it, it goes into a field of data. A field of data, or let's say Chinese data, we have dumplings or I said kind of roast duck, a chop suey, and it's, it's stirring in the, in the soup. Uh, is this entity Chinese? And they all look at me in silent contemplation. I said, is this entity Chinese? Now, he, this soul went into China. And is this entity Chinese? There was a long silence, and they started shaking their head. I said, after living in China for 20 years, this entity goes to America, all right? Into the field of data made of Coca-Cola, hamburgers, and what have you. Donuts. Donuts, yes. <laughs> I said, is this, is this entity American? They look at me and say, again, they shook their head. So it's not American, right? Number, 
It doesn't matter where the soul goes into, whether it's in Russia, in Africa, in Europe, this soul is a soul. All right? And how many of you understand this? Not a single hand raised because they were, it was a shock to them. I said, you know what? What are you carrying? This is a soul that carries two backs, two data backs, all right? And every one of us is carrying these two data backs. And in this back, uh, information that works or doesn't work. So there's going to be information that works for you or it does not work for you. Information that does not work for you, you just remove it. All the data that does not work for you, you remove it. It doesn't matter whether the data is made in China or Africa or, or, or the US. If it doesn't work for you, you, you throw it out. So it doesn't matter, no matter the color of the cat, whether it's a brown cat, black cat, or white cat, the cat that catches the mice is the one that you want to keep. Right. And in fact, this was very revealing to the audience some of them just was, were, some of them were stunned. So, if you are a source, that means you are an energy, and energy do not die, it, does, it transforms itself. It transforms itself. It does not disappear. It's just like water. Water can be flowing, liquid, it can be frozen, it can be in a lake, it can be in a cup, it can be in a, in a river. It's constantly transforming itself and it doesn't die. All right. When water dries up or muddy water dries up, it goes up in the sky, it's mist, and it comes down as rain, pure again. It's constantly transforming. Now, I was no one, I'm no, I'm no more the 10 year old I was, neither was I, the, am I the 20 year old that I, I, have, I, I, I was. All right. So I'm constantly transforming. But if you ask a caterpillar, you know, hey, you're struggling, you know, with your, your hundred legs, hundred feet. One day you don't need those legs anymore, you know. You're going to be a butterfly. He's going to look at you and say, what are you talking about? What's a butterfly, you know? That's my life. That's all I know. I know how to just, uh, you know, slide up and down the leaves and it takes me a long time. So I said, one day you won't have to do that. You're going to be a butterfly. So we as energy, we're continually transforming ourselves. So if we're eternal, it doesn't mean, it means that I have a hundred lives or a thousand lives that I have not lived yet. So what is this life? Though it's important and we treat it as important, this is not the only life you have. But that's the, this is not the only life I have. So I'm not afraid of dying. The death does not exist. Transformation, yes, it does exist. It just transforms. So we're eternal. We are eternal. No, no need to fear of, of losing your body. Okay. And if you want more information, go in and check on Google on near life that near death experience, near the near death experience, and you find lots and lots of information of people who survived death. Right. I want to add something is that it doesn't mean that this life here that we have now is not important. On the contrary, because uh, we are here to learn things, you know, to, uh, and to appreciate things, you know. And uh, so we are going to take care of this life that we have. It's just that when we are facing difficulties, sometimes we are just submerged by these difficulties with the emotions, the negative emotions that go with it, which could drive us uh, to... Um, to the wrong path and uh, that is what we want to avoid and by having this perception we make our life lighter more enjoyable more profitable and we're going to be more productive too and especially we are going to enjoy it what happens when we get stressed yeah when we get stressed you know there are hormones that are liberated in the body and when we have positive emotions other hormones are liberated like oxytocin endorphins and you know what they bring us? They bring us a lot. You know, not only do they reduce stress, but they permit us 
to have more generosity, more empathy for other people. Creatively. Yes, it's been proven by uh, the latest recent scientific studies. Can you imagine? Uh, yes, creativity. And endorphins. Endorphins, they permit the release of dopamine. Dopamine is the hormone of pleasure and motivation. And pleasure. Scientific studies have shown that pleasure permits to release another hormone, which is the growth hormone. And you know what this growth hormone does to us? It protects us against viruses. Can you imagine? It helps reinforce our immunity. Right, your body and my body, our body, they are worth zillions of dollars. You know, if something goes wrong with our body, because we screw it up by being frightened or being anxious, even if you have a trillion dollars, you won't be able to go to a shop and buy yourself a new body. <laughs> you know, you can't do that. Even the richest man, right? If something goes wrong with the body, through sheer and through anxiety, you're not going to, be able to get another one, all right? It's got to wait till the transform process. Since it goes for uh, the same transform, transform, uh, transformation, right from caterpillar, caterpillar to butterfly. So we got to take care of this life. Right. And even though we may be protected by our hormones, we want to uh, take precautions, yeah. you know, to uh, do the right things. And with DDD, we can accept the situation better, you know, and, uh, and be happy. Yes, you so say with DDD, you focus on all the things you have and all the things that you can appreciate. You know, you, each time you focus something, you appreciate. Right now, you're, you're watching at the screen. See, you appreciate the fact that we can talk even thousands of miles away. I really appreciate the fact that, that we can share things with you. All right? So, life is really, really beautiful. We just got to keep ourselves cool during these months of confinement and learn new things during this month of confinement and help the people around us. And don't forget to wash your hands. Uh, if you want to know more, we're going to put in we're going to have some of our students uh, testify on what these tools can do for them. And if you want to be more confident and get more tools, more other types of tools that we have been sharing with the, the corporate world or with the general public, you'll be able to watch a small little clip and go to our, go to a, a, a new website, a, a new website called webinar.com and, and get those tools. So I hope that uh, these three concepts would help us get through this tough times. All right, first is the DDD, desireless diet day, three times a day to get your, yourself slim and active and, and, and feeling good three times a day. And then learn to recognize or see Bob and turn your head to the right each time when you feel bad. Each time you get, feel, you get hit by Bob and you feel bad, right? 30 seconds on focusing on objects and then 30 seconds on appreciative what you have and what you can do with what you have. And lastly, remember that we're all eternal. We do not die. We just transform, right? Just transform ourselves. Eternally, you're gonna have thousands of lives that is far more superior than the lives we're living in here now, right? So with this, we're gonna leave you and uh, hope to see you one day again on a live webinar where you can ask questions and we can share our experiences, okay? So we're gonna say goodbye for you now. Goodbye and yeah. have a good time. Yes. Take care. Bye. Bye.